Hi everyone, this is Grace of GB Maltese, and I thought I would do a paint with me along with showing you a sweet gift that I received from a friend. And I wanted to thank everyone for all of the lovely comments you left on my last video. I was really down, and let me tell you, you guys know how to make a girl's spirits get lifted. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all of you. And I loved this card. Uh, this was part of a gift that Dearly from Dearly Crafted sent me. She said she had sent me a little something in the mail. And it was this box of cards to be colored that have lovely messages on them. Some are scriptures. Some are just little messes, messages. You are precious to God. With God, all things are possible. And there are so, I read through all of them. And I chose this one to color to show what I think of you guys. A sweet friendship refreshes the soul. And that comes straight from the Bible. And I want to thank all of you who really showed your friendship to me and dearly you couldn't have picked a better gift than this reading through these different cards has been absolutely wonderful I have so enjoyed it and I will be coloring more <laughs> and showing them to you I was up late working on this one and it just brought me joy to do it so you might be seeing some coloring on my channel. This kind of will get me started back on that journey, maybe. Um, coloring, crochet, other things. I had so many of you tell me, hey, do what makes you happy. And you know what? You're right. That's what I need to do. I need to move on and not worry about what other people are saying about me. Good, bad, or ugly, I guess. Um, but I have my diamond painting here from Diamonds on Canvas. And I'm going to be working on number four, which is this little sign right here. And it is the sky area. And I'm looking at it upside down because it's at the top of the picture. So, let me pour these into my tray. I love this tr these trays. These are my favorites now. <laughs> I use them all the time. And someone was asking, how do you get those rows so that when you are wanting to do a multi-placers, well, I put quite a few. Look how sparkly. Aren't they pretty? I put quite a few in my tray and I just, I can pick it up and shake it around. Then I kind of lean it back like this, tap it a little bit, and shake it. Whoops, shook some right out my palm. I got a little more in there than I'd planned. And then you get rows, and these rows I can use to pick them up with a multi placer or just one by one. So it's very easy, it takes a little practice, I guess. I guess I've been doing it for so long, I don't really think about it. But, let's get a little bit of this done, and I'll just do a little chatting with you as I do this. I won't stay for a long time. I don't want to bore you to tears. But, I'll tell you what, I was shocked at how many of you said you enjoy my painting chats. That was one thing I thought, oh, I better not do too many of those because they're going to get bored of that. And that was the thing that was shown over and over and over as being the favorite one of the favorite things that I do on my channel so I plan on doing more I'm using a straightener with some double stick tape on it to pick these up and I'll do another video showing this a little bit better but it's so much easier to use I'll show you how I put Gorilla Glue tape on there. 
you can use a lot of different kinds of tape. They even sell um, kits that have that on Amazon. And I showed, I did a video. Let me try to pull you up a little closer so maybe you can see what I'm doing a little better. Okay, maybe I'll do a little bit in this area. Okay, I'm going to pick got quite a few on my placer here. I'm just going to put them down and I'm going to pick some more. Because when you're using the straightener, you can see the edges where your diamonds are so much better than with a multi-placer. Well, I've dropped a few green ones here, so let me put those put those to the side. Okay, so this is an easy way, and if you don't think they're straight enough, you can go through and straighten them up. I also enjoy just doing them one by one, so I'll probably do that for a little while. I find that to kind of be relaxing to do them one by one, especially when I'm talking kind of slow down in life. Because this is not something that you have to rush through. You don't have to be the first one finished with a diamond painting. It does not matter. Take your time and do it how you want. This is one of my favorite diamond painting pens. I have all my wood ones are my favorites. And on this one, I just have a plain straightener on the end. I'm going to straighten these up from when I put them down with the multiplacer just because I'm a little bit <laughs> picky making sure they're really really straight I like them to be very straight so last night we had a really really strong thunderstorm it was unbelievably um, loud and we got lots of rain they told us What's so funny is at one time they said we had a really, really big chance of rain. Then the next thing we were told, we don't have any chance of rain. Well, last night, while it was raining, they then told us we had 100% chance of rain. <clears throat> I think it would be nice if I'd had a job that I could be wrong like that and still have a job. <laughs> I just don't know. I, I'm, I know predicting the weather is pretty much impossible to do it very far in advance because anything can happen to change it. But it's, it's kind of funny. Uh, in Texas, when we have really hot days, which we've been having, and when it cools down with some rain, sometimes it's, pretty, it's a pretty rough ride. And it was kind of a rough ride last night. I sat up and colored my card that I thought was so sweet and beautiful. I'm not, um, these are things I can place around it and just to look at and make me happy. But it's beautiful, just beautiful. When I go to do my diamond paintings with a clear cover because someone was asking me about the clear covers. I don't cut my clear covers, especially on a real big one, but I will show how to cut clear covers on a smaller canvas. This one, I like to have it left like this so that it falls all the way back down and covers the whole piece when I'm done. And then I had someone say, I open such a big area. Well, I'm very careful when I do that. I mean, things can happen. I could drop drills on there and have to pick them off. But I don't have a cat. And cats are known to want to lay up on it, whatever you have. It doesn't matter whether you want them to or not. They're kind of the, the master of the home. I have had cats before. So, I do know that much. I have dogs, but my dogs don't shed. And they don't get on the table. So there's no hair going to get on this. And if you've ever noticed when I'm diamond painting, I don't wear long sleeves. And living in Texas, you really don't need long sleeves very many times during the year. So 
I just have it all the way open. I also do not put, some people will put washi tape. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I don't use the washi tape. I haven't found it necessary. Because I normally cut these white edges off or tape over them when I'm finished. So nothing's going to show anyway. So I thought I'd just bring that in. I've had several people tell me they wanted me to show some of the tools that I use in diamond painting that make it easier to do and I will definitely do some of those because I think that is a great request and mostly everyone just said have fun and yeah I, I was just forgetting about that part and forgetting the reason I made this channel in the first place was to share things that I enjoy and be able to talk to new people, make new friends, and just kind of give me uh, an outlet to share these things. And I taught school for many years, and sometimes I like to teach a little something. Those of you who... <clears throat> only diamond paint you might see some videos come up showing some other crafts I do have in mind and I've mentioned this before okay another thing I do is I turn this tray so that I can get to my diamonds easier and I pick such a light color <laughs> but that was an area that I was coming to next so what I do on these like this is I go in order when I have these clear canvases, I do number one first. And as you can see, this is a huge canvas. It's very big. <clears throat> and you can see where I have done some of these areas. Very pretty and shiny. Okay, and this is why you don't want to put it on upside down. <laughs> it stick. That didn't stick too bad. I'm not going to pull that off anymore. But it's huge. So what I do is I just keep turning it around and do the edges and do one color. I'll do number one. And I've got them kitted up by numbers in my Elizabeth Ward case. They're kitted by numbers, so I'll get number one. I'll find all the number ones on here and do all the way around. I'll turn this around upside down, sideways, right side up. And I also have a tabletop easel that I will show you in a video because that's another thing that helps me when I can't get to the middle ones I'll put it on the tabletop easel so I can reach those that are in the center because it's pretty much impossible to <laughs> to be doing that and stretching my hand if I'm stretching my arm way out here and trying to do them that makes it a little bit harder and so you can kind of see what I've done on the canvas hangs all the way over there it's very pretty and sparkly look at the sparkles on this I just love it I really am enjoying doing this one it's a beautiful cottage scene and I love cottages anyway but I go through and do one color at a time it's just easier for me and I was saying something and forgot what I was talking about just a moment ago. I do that quite often. I'll think of something. Oh, I need to get that out. And I'll have to do that before I can finish what I'm saying because I'm afraid I'll forget. And then I'll forget what I was talking about just a minute ago. Oh, well. Maybe I'll remember. Oh, I remember now. I said you might be seeing some other crafts. Um, one thing that I do plan on doing is a video on making twiddle muffs. And people are always asking, what are twiddle muffs? Well, twiddle muffs are things that I make, that I crochet for Alzheimer's and dementia, dementia patients used to help them with anxiety. And usually they like, they will pick at things like their buttons or their skin or if they have an IV in their hand. And this is something they use to keep their hands busy. So when I do that, if you just want to look and see what it what it's all about, please do. And they don't have to be crochet. They could be knit. They could be sewn. 
um, you'll see when I do them how I attach different things to be twiddled with. So that's something I've got coming up very soon. It's kind of hard for me to figure out how I'm going to angle the camera best so that you can see me doing my stitches. And you do need to know how to crochet at least basic stitches to do this. This is not a beginner video. If you'd like me to do beginner videos, I can do that. I learned to crochet in 2011 and I watched YouTube videos. And some of my favorite people to watch were Bob Wilson, one, two, three. I used to watch the crochet crowd. Some of his, go back to some of his older ones, the beginners. Um, Creative Grandma does do different stitches. Um, Jada and Stitches works nice and slow. You want to find someone who will work at a pace that you can work at. You don't want to be trying to go too fast because you will get so frustrated. Trust me. I know because I was there. It was hard for me to decide how to hold the mess, much less make stitches with it. So, if you're interested, I can show that. I have a beaded cross stitch that I still need to do an unboxing for. I have some diamond paintings that I need to unbox. Yes, I still I do have some. If they're hard, it's hard to stop getting them. I need to stop and do more of these so that I can get them done. And I'm trying to get to work on them and as far as my lives go, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep doing them. Very few people said they liked them. Most people said they don't like to watch them because they're having to read the comments, and I do understand that. So I might do lives once or twice a month. That's what I'm thinking because I'd like to be able to get some of these other videos in and, and talk to you guys. So... That's kind of what I'm thinking. That's what I've got in my mind. If you have anything you'd like to suggest down below, please do so because I have some great ideas from suggestions people have made to me. Man, do I appreciate that. You have no idea how nice it is for someone to suggest things that they're interested in. It may not be something I can do, <laughs> but I can, I will try. I don't know any and everything about every every subject. I would even tell the kids at school, um, what's such and such? And I'm like, well, I don't know, but I will do my best to try to find out. So, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you, oh, I know it all, and it needs to be done just like this. Because I'm the all-knowing grace, and you better do it my way. No, <laughs> I know better than that. And I learn things from the kids, just like I can learn things from you. And I would always tell them that. I said, guys, I learn stuff from you all the time. And they always liked that because we learn from each other. We're not, we're not an island. We work with each other and help each other out. Just like so many of you did on your comments the other day. When I'm down, I will go back and look at those and remember that there are more good people in this world than evil. I truly believe that. It seems like we just see mostly the evil. You turn on the news and I just cannot believe all of the murders and things like that. Uh, it just makes me so sad. And sometimes I just can't watch it. I will have to look later and see what's going on. It's just so depressing. And there's so many people hurting out there. And some of you were telling me about some of your difficulties. And several of you were um, telling me that you suffer from anxiety also, just like I do. And that you could understand what I was talking about and there are a lot of people out there with anxiety and other 
I mean, you might as well say it. It's a mental illness type thing. And people, when they talk about mental illness, they look at it in ways that are not correct. There's nothing wrong with someone um, who's having problems, maybe being able to handle situations because of their chemistry to their brain um, or other parts of the body. We have no, just like if you're suffering with diabetes, you have no control over how your pancreas works and controls your blood sugar levels and the insulin in your body. So we need to stop hating on each other and calling each other names and saying, oh, well, I can't see that you don't look sick. Well, just because someone doesn't look sick doesn't mean that they're not suffering from something. They just probably aren't telling you because they don't want to bother you, trouble people. That's kind of how we are in this life. We, we keep things to ourselves a lot of times. So if you ever have questions about anxiety, panic attacks, um, that type of thing, being afraid to get out in large crowds, I understand you very well. It is something I've suffered with forever, it seems like. I remember when I was in elementary school. I can't remember what grade I was in. Maybe second, third. I, I'm not sure. And I remember I was terrified to go to school. My stomach would hurt. I would be crying. And I didn't know why. I, I liked my teacher. Nobody... I don't remember anyone picking my... Yeah, I was bullied some when I was a kid. But at that time, I was just scared to go to school. And so my parents took me to the doctor. And I remember the doctor... And I can still remember the taste of this medicine. He gave me a liquid that they gave me every morning. Now, I don't know if that was something to help relax me or if it was some type of placebo. I have no idea. All I know is that it did help me through... A period and it seems like these anxiety problems go through periods they it, it may not it may last several months and then it may be gone for a little while um, but when it's here full force that's when you it's really bad so I remember taking that medication it was some funky tasting stuff it, kind of a minty yeah I just I still remember it as a kid tasting horrible but I took that, and it helped me get to school. And I remember my principal at the school. It was a lady, and she would come get me out of class, and she would walk with me around the campus. And she'd tell me, oh, would you go pick that paper up that's over there? And, you know, as a kid, when you're little, you want to please adults. And it made me happy to do those things, and that she took time to spend time with me. So... That was one thing that I still remember. And as a teacher, I guess I was always, you know, I was for every child, of course. Every single one of them. I loved them all. You know, I, I don't treat people differently. I'm just not like that. I didn't have teacher pets. I thought that would, was wrong. Very wrong. But I could understand... Any child who came to school in tears, and they had no reason to be afraid, but there was something within them that, that was, and we can't control it. I don't know what causes it. If I did, shoot, I could help a whole bunch of people and solve a lot of problems, including my own. We wouldn't be worrying about um, going places and having panic attacks, and that type of thing. But I, I still remember that in school. And it was so funny, I was thinking about that this past weekend, because I was thinking, when did all of this start, first start place? And mine start, took place when I was a young kid. And then it was it went away, I guess, because I was able to 
go on to school and function and then I remember it hit me real bad again in high school um, and not so well just a little not real bad in high school just a little bit of nerves but nothing I I couldn't handle I was able to still take you know my take one day at a time I guess you might say when I got to college oh my because college is very stressful stress is going to make your anxiety much worse it just is um, certain things happen in your life that will make it worse and I remember I had I was having a panic attack and I'd never had one this bad before I remember I was having a hard time breathing and if you've had panic attacks um, you'll understand what I'm talking about and I, I just couldn't breathe and I was uh, afraid I was going to pass out I was afraid I was going to die my heart was pounding and my arms and legs and my lip started tingling and going numb and I was terrified my sister and I lived in a dorm and my husband he wasn't my husband then he's my fiance we were sitting in our dorm and all of a sudden I started feeling so bad and I'm like God I am feeling really bad you've got to get me to the hospital I, I've got to get to the emergency room there's something I feel like I'm dying and I remember Jerry that was my fiance husband now was going out to the car and I remember shout, shouting out the window because I had said something about going to the clinic I remember shouting out the window we decided to go to the emergency room instead like I couldn't I could not think um, that you know I was going to be able to tell him that once he got back with the car no I, I was not able to think at all and I remember getting to the emergency room they gave me a shot to calm me down I was hyperventilating was what was causing me to nearly uh, it was freaking me out to, to feel all that tingling well that's part of, was part of my panic attacks I learned to breathe in a paper bag um, and also sometimes I would wet a washcloth with warm water and hold it over my nose and breathe in warm air to try to relax at that time I was given some type of medication I don't know what it was but it didn't help it was a miracle <laughs> I was able to I missed a lot of classes I was afraid to go to class there for a while so there was a period of time that I did miss classes I was afraid to go I was afraid to leave the dorm I was afraid to get out and then after a, a period of time I got to where I was able to kind of I guess control it I really am not sure I didn't ever control it it just it just happened to I guess wear down a little bit and I, I went through a period where I was not suffering as much but I went through periods of time in my life that were just horrendous when um, I'll have to tell you the story one day about my daughter getting her leg ripped open on an escalator that's a whole another story in itself and boy did that really send me over the edge and that lasted for some time and they were sending me to go see a psychiatrist and I finally found one who was able to subscribe medication for me prescribe not subscribe yeah but magazines <laughs> oh my goodness you'll just have to forgive me when I <laughs> say the wrong thing but I was prescribed different medications throughout that time and some of them whoo -hoo. <laughs> you talk about feeling high as a kite yeah it, it was not sometimes I feel like my head was floating on the string and like a balloon and I was looking down at myself just weird stuff so there were times that and I mentioned this before that I had to take a, a couple of different times I had to take a leave of absence from school because I was afraid to drive or get out 
I finally found a psychiatrist who got me on the right medications and I was able to and have still knock on wood that will last forever now uh, some medications that has allowed me to live my life and be able to live pretty normal life I still do not like to be in big crowds like if someone would wanted me to go to a concert or something that would not be my cup of tea at all I don't want to be in the in large in large crowds that's just not for me but I just thought I'd share a little bit more with you guys um, in case there's somebody out there who's struggling because you're going to feel like you're not going to make it to the next minute much less the next day but you hang in there please hang in there it will get better it may take a little time but don't don't do anything that you would regret and I am I am talking about suicide at this point I did get to that point and I remember sitting there this is when I was um, had a leave of absence and all I could think about was you know people would be better off without me I mean I had a daughter my daughter was I guess about five she was at school um, when I was there thinking about all these things and I had my husband and but you get to thinking I'm just a burden to everybody and I remember the TV was on and at that time a number came on the screen it was a suicide hotline and I knew that that was meant for me to see and I called them and they talked to me and I tell you what those people really helped me it was a uh, uh, a man and he said you know you've got your daughter you've got your husband what are they going to do without you so I got to thinking you know I'm being really selfish I'm thinking about myself only it is a selfish act and I know people have done it because I've had friends who have lost their kids to that very thing or I've taught some of my kids who had parents that did that and that is never the answer never and I'm sorry I got such into such a deep conversation on this today but I had some people commenting that they suffered from anxiety also and I know that there are hundreds of thousands probably millions around the world that suffer from that and and they think what do I have to live for don't ever don't live for me anyway I care about every single person and I know that sounds cheesy you know I'm just here on YouTube talking I care about people I love people I sometimes don't like what they do I don't have to like what they do you can love a person without liking what they do but there are people who care and don't ever, ever feel that way. There is someone always that will care about you and would miss you more than life itself if something happened. So when you're getting down into that position, because I've been there, just remember you have people who do love you and care about you and need you. Because that's the way I felt. I wasn't needed. But boy, did I find out different. Um, yeah, we are needed. No matter how pitiful we are or um, broken down we are, we are needed. Somebody in this world needs you. Okay. All right. Let me get off of that. I'm sure you will end on a happier note. But I guess my happy note is... I'm now so much better, and there are times that I do fall back into being really sad, but normally I uh, can do my diamond painting and move on. Find something you enjoy doing. Watch, um, there are lots of YouTube videos, people talking about, um, you know, different problems, and, 
and different crafts. Oh my goodness, there's so many crafts. I tell you what, I think I have tried, I don't know how many crafts I've tried, but in the past, I remember I latch took a lion. He was three foot by four foot, and I had that sucker framed. It took me a year to do it, but it was gorgeous. I've got it out in my shed somewhere. That thing is so big. I used to hang it on the wall. <laughs> I'm like, okay, we need to get rid of that. So, uh, And then I did oil painting. I have done painting with acrylics. Uh, I used to do some drawing. The best book I've ever used to learn how to draw was Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. I think I might have mentioned this before. It helps you look at things differently. So, I really enjoyed that book. It helped me a lot. And I'd never drawn anything in my, my, my life that looked like anything. They were mostly stick figures. And they had you turn a picture upside down and draw it. And it looked just like the picture. You just have to learn to look at those angles and lines a different way than what we normally look at them. So, that was fascinating. And when I was doing my painting, I learned to look at colors differently. When I would go outside and I look at trees, I'm like, you know, that tree isn't just green. It's got all different shades in there. It's not just one color of green. So it's fascinating. Just look around you. There are so many fascinating things out there. We need to look for the good stuff. What is the strangest hobby you've ever done? I don't know if I've done anything that was really strange. I mean, I haven't, like, gone octopus hunting or anything like that. But um, there are lots of things out there to try. And I, I do. I, uh, someone mentioned me doing some coloring. I need to do that. I haven't done that in a long time. I got lots of color. One of my favorite coloring books are by Hannah Lynn. I love her books. How many of you have ever seen or bought, purchased some of her coloring books? I'll have to show you some of those. They are so cute. I even go to her website and sometimes just get the download of the coloring book so that I can download it on thicker paper or cardboard, cardstock, because it will be um, nice to use with different types of medium. You can use watercolor on it or markers. You can still use colored pencils. Anything. So, it's kind of interesting to see what everybody likes to do. It, it's a fascinating world out there. And there are a lot of very talented people. It just blows my mind to see the talent that a lot of you guys have. Some of you have emailed me and sent me some things that you've done. And I, I've i just been blown away. Just fabulous. So, there's a lot of talent. And don't ever think anything you do is garbage because it's not. If it's something you've done, it's precious. I mean, I have some things that I've done. <laughs> I thought, whoa, <laughs> that, that's kind of funky looking, but... Hey, I did it, you know. I enjoy doing it. Just enjoy doing what you're doing, and it'll all be good. Doesn't really matter. I've have, I'm having to relearn that. It doesn't really matter what other people think. I let that kind of slide by and let myself get all worked up. And, wow, you guys are so awesome. So awesome. To help me get through that period. Now, I'm going to, let's see, <clears throat> let's move this down. I need to use darker colors to show you how to do this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, the, the pollen is horrible, and I'm sure it's probably horrible wherever you are, too. <laughs> if you have trees and grass, flowers, whatever. I remember I had them do all of the testing on me to see what I was allergic to. I was allergic to every tree and grass 
I was allergic to so many things. So they were going to have me do the shots two times a week. And I started doing that. And then, I mean, I was, this is when I was working. I didn't have time to go in there. And I did not want to stick the needle in myself. So I guess I'm a big baby. And so I just quit doing it. I don't know if it would have worked or not. But it might have. And I just... I just go with the flow, I suppose. I gotta sneeze, I gotta sneeze, and scratch your throat and all that fun stuff. But, yeah, it's been, I, I've got lots of things to talk about, and I'm not going to, normally I don't talk about myself in this way, <laughs> telling you my problems, but I felt like I wanted to share in case there's anybody else out there that is suffering at this time and was at the point I was at, please stop. Look around you. Get help. Talk to someone. It doesn't have to be anybody you know. I didn't know that person I called, but boy, did they help me. It's amazing. And I, I left, I'm going to start leaving my email under my videos. I, I'm going to try to remember. I had several people email me. I left it under the last one and I appreciated the, word, the, the kindness that was shown to me by those of you who, who chose to email me. And, um, and I think I have commented to pretty much everyone on that last video I tried to. <laughs> if I missed you, I am so sorry. But uh, I was overwhelmed with the love. And I do mean the love. So I think that's a happy note to end on. So I'm going to say goodbye. And I really do truly love all of you guys out there. You are awesome. And don't forget that. You take care of yourself. Have a blessed day. And enjoy your crafting. Bye.